Welcome to this look at a new mod map on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. This is Rasvet. This is a new mod map by Den Ben. It's 390.31 megabytes download. It's a Russian map. Rasvet means dawn or daybreak, possibly sunrise. One of those kind of all mean the same thing, really. In Russian. And I'll be honest, straight off the bat, this map has kind of got me. It's gripped me. I am... And I know I say a lot of times, I really like this map. I really like this map. The terrain, the features, the detail, the things that have been added. It's very, very good indeed. Now, it may not be everyone's cup of tea. That is, of course, just my opinion. Now... Where do we start? Well, we're on the map. I'm on New Farmer, as I always am on Normal Economy. On New Farmer, it is 648 out of 1,299 megabytes down uh, uh, slot count, which is quite high, but it's a big map, loads of detail. I personally think it's worth that. You know, that's just the way you know, my mind works. On Farm Manager and Start from Scratch, apart from the uh, finances being different, the slot count is identical because you start with the same equipment on each one. Well, what do we start with on New Farmer? We start with all of this. So all of our equipment is based around this kind of farm area here. We do have a barn, water tower, we've got um, a cow pen, and we've got a pig pen included in all of that land. Obviously, on Farm Manager and Start from Scratch, you don't start with any land. But field prices range wildly from these little plots down here 42,000 and 48,000 and then we kind of work our way up there are some forestry areas we've got field 7 for example is 364 then field 5 which is rather large 1,506 we've got loads and loads and loads of grass areas all around now most of the cell points are located in the northwest of the map but we do have a few further around and we do have some nice additions on this map which I'm Again, kind of, I'm excited for, probably, I know it sounds awful, but the map reviews I've done over the last week, there have been a few iffy ones and a few, you know, this, for me, kind of ticks all the boxes. We have two additional crop types. We've got alfalfa and we've got clover. Both of those can be put into the ground with the cedar. Uh, if we go into this menu and go to, uh, go across to tools, if I go down to cedars, You'll see as we go along, the cedar there on the end shows two different ones, alfalfa and clover. So they're crops that can be put into the ground. Now they can be harvested, mowed, um, they can be tedded, they can be windrowed, and they can be baled. If we come out and we go to the baling technology and we go across and look at the balers, you've got two extra bales there. So you can pick them up, but you, so you can do um, regular alfalfa and clover, but also dried alfalfa and clover now there's not a sell point per se for them i'm just trying to think did the bales sell point i just want to check this very quickly the bales sell point barn where's the bales one gone oh bale sale if we go right to the end no it doesn't say anything about that now the reason behind that being that these two crop types on this map, alfalfa and clover, are used to feed the animals. So your sheep, your cows, not your pigs, but sheep and cows will take alfalfa and clover in regular form or the dried form, tedded form, as part of their crop, as part of their feed. So you can do grass, you can do hay, you can do alfalfa, clover, and then the dried versions of both. So it kind of adds something else in. But there's also something else been added into this map, which we're going to get to in a little while. I want to kind of surprise you with it. Now, for me, colour palette, texturing is brilliant. What I like as well about this is as you go around the map, there's sort of different sections to the map. We've got swampy areas. We've got a lot of um, rivers and flooded areas. There are lots of um, bridges. It's going to be a tricky map to, to play on, but it does give you a lot of scope for with all the grass areas, ploughing out new fields and expanding as you go. Again, my kind of narrative mind is already r racing ahead, thinking, because when you start here at the main farm, it's pretty dilapidated. You don't start with a silo. Uh, what else don't you start with? There's no sleep trigger either. That gives you the option to place your start farm wherever you want. So if you know the machinery is here, as we go around the map, there are areas, so there's a, there's a farm here, We've got um, a farm area up here, 
obviously we've got um, sheep there, but we've also got a farm area here. We've got another one here. So there's loads of these farm areas. Another kind of more factory-based one here. But we do have a lot of these factory areas and farm areas dotted around the map. So you can have your start point wherever you want. I like that a lot. Um, as far as start machinery goes, we start with two John Deere's, 6155, 6135, the Russell Mash RSM161. We've got an Agriline TKD301. We've got a header for the Russell Mash. We've got a plow. We've got um, that is a uh, cultivator. Was that a cedar? That's the cultivator, isn't it? Agrimash cultivator. And again, it's that kind of um, Eastern European Russian manufacturers as well. So it's not just that kind of plonked. You know, or here's the regular sort of stuff. We've got a night feed mixer, front load of stuff. The animal pens are in place, but we have only got one cow pen, one pig pen, and one sheep pen. So it's not like the map is littered with them. If you sell all of this start equipment and just come onto the map and say, well, I'm going to put my own stuff on, you can get the slot count down to 536, which is also very nice indeed. Now, what I also like is look at the equipment and machinery. It's in a pretty poor state. Again, that narrative thing of when you start, if we go across and look at our machinery and equipment, we've got loads of it there, needs complete repair work doing to it. It's on zero. The, the What it's worth is it's pretty low. Um, so it kind of gives you that feeling that the farm has been let go. It needs someone to come in, take it over. You know, it's gone from that kind of Russian cooperative, big um, government run kind of um, farms to it being a situation where people are buying them up. Now, it seems weird and you may question the use of a John Deere. However, I was watching Simon Reeve. Uh, I've been watching a lot of his stuff recently and he was doing a series across Russia, the entirety of Russia. <laughs> Um, started in Vladivostok on the eastern coast and then going thousands and thousands of miles right the way across to Moscow. And around Vladivostok, there's a lot of farming land and farming area, very rich in nutrients and soil. Again, since the kind of say collapse of the Soviet Union, but the farming's kind of gone into dis, um, disrepair and it's declining. What's happening is they're getting a lot of Chinese investment and they're getting a lot of Chinese immigrant workers coming over and starting up those farms so as he left Vladivostok and was kind of going out into the farming area the first tractor he came across was a John Deere you couldn't get much further east on the Russian continent or Russian country a John Deere in Vladivostok it was bonkers but loved it we have a workshop here at the sort of I said the main farm area where you start with inspirational posters up on the wall for the workers which I like there are light switches there's loads of barn and building space around this farm area there was another workshop trigger what's that did I dream that the big kind of hang all of those barn doors open there so you can put vehicles in there but as you can see there's lots of flat areas so put adding extra placeables and silos and things like that it's all very nice indeed what we're gonna do is head out here and I'm gonna go left there's quite a lot to see. What I do like as well, we turn left here. There's this building to the left, again with a kind of inspirational mural. I'm pretty sure that's a statue of Lenin. I'm th I think that's Lenin. I love that. Very cool. Vladimir Ilyich. I think it's Ilyanov, is it? Lenin. Was in power from... 1917 to 20, 1924, I think it was. Something like that. My history's not that great when it comes to those things. Right, so, as you can see, a map tour as well is as much as look at the landscape and see what you think of it. The different textures on road surfaces, the colour palette used, the foliage, the colours of foliage, I don't think is overused. Sometimes you get maps and there's loads of red and loads of white and it's overused. But the detailing, it's another reason why the slot count is fairly high for the map. All these things with the culverts and the drainage ditches and the colouring and the textures. As we go around the map as well, there's a few of these dotted around. These bunker silos built in. 
As we go in. Silage, clamps, bunker silos. We've got lots of nice bits of bumpy terrain. And what's also been added in, which I love, is in some of the swampy areas, you've got this, um, you know, the sort of muddy texture where you, you sort of disappear into it a little bit. I know it's not actual mud, but it gives you that kind of feel, you know. And I like that, as you can tell. I know I've said this a few times on maps that have come out and I haven't actually done it, but I'm seriously considering doing a Let's Play on here. I'm just thinking using the Ural lorries and trying to find loads more of the kind of that sort of stuff. Anyway, we've got a water tower just there. And this is the cow farm. Again, something a bit different. We don't come across gates like that very often. So, this is the cow pen, cow pasture. This will hold 200 cows. Our point for loading and unloading, although we're not sure about seasons at the moment, but potentially is here. We've got a slurry tank is around the back, just around behind that building, as you've whizzed across here. The slurry tank is just here, with where you connect there. There's other barns and buildings around. This is the main cattle shed. And if we come across here, the cows go across this bit, they go into that bit there. They also go into this one over here. In here, we've got our straw bedding trigger and we've got our feed trigger, I think, was here. And then the water trough, I think, was around the back here, if I recall correctly. The water trough is just here. And they use all of this area, all, for all around there, and holds 200. But I, 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 what I am finding as well, on some maps now where we have a sleep trigger put in that you can't remove, it kind of hampers what, what you can do, where you can start. I know a lot of people often ask, so where's the sleep trigger? The thing is, not having one, I think is a real bonus. Oh, as far as I can tell as well, the manure comes out to here, I think. As far as I can tell. Look, because there are so many different farm locations around this entire map, having that ability to pick and choose where you place whatever sleep trigger you decide to place makes life so much easier. Now again, we've got these kind of murals on the side of the bus stops. Inside that, you know... Can you tell? I like this. So we're going to head out to the uh, northeast a little bit here. There are going to be parts of this map I'm not going to be able to show you. I'm just going to run out of time. We've got lots of these low-lying waterway areas. It makes the map feel a lot bigger because there's only certain routes you can take to get across the map. But we have got lots of bridges and fords and... Um, again, the texture and landscape in this fallen trees all over the place. Very, very nice indeed. I don't know about PC, but I'm pretty sure on console. This is Den Ben's first map, I think, for us on console, isn't it? So, this is the sheep farm. And if we just jump out here, if we carry along that track there, it takes us to another farm area over there with more barns and buildings which you can buy. Those farm areas as well aren't that expensive. We've gone uh, from here, we went across Water Tower, this area here. We've now come up here, so that bit out there is 140,000 for that farm. There's another kind of farm area. This is a reservoir point here. You can buy that for 479. I don't think you get any money for that. Uh, that farm area is 198,000. Uh, that one there is 184. So you can buy up those plots fairly inexpensively. Uh, this one that we're on here is 103. So come in and open the gates and each yard is different i think there's that there's the sosnovka um like decorations pack or Sosnos sosnovka pack as well that's available for placeables that would fit this really really nicely so sheep trigger is here uh this will hold 250 sheep our wool spawn point was and i think it's here pretty sure it's that one there and then we've got, I think the troughs are inside, because it's only water and 
yeah we've got our water and our feed troughs here because the sheep don't take bedding so this is the sheep farm which you can buy now we're gonna head north out of here some of this I might have to backtrack a little bit so what I'll do is kind of jump to where I am and then show you where I'm on the map because I'm going to have to come back past all this, but I want to get up to the northern point to show you um, something that I, I, again, I just think is really very cool indeed. Yeah, so placeable area just to the left there. I have tried buying up a few of them off camera to see if any other triggers or things pop up, because sometimes on maps you have like hidden animal pens and things like that that only appear when you buy the land, but I haven't noticed that yet. So we're heading up north through some of the fields. Nice sized fields, it's big, there's plenty of forestry. Off to our left as we come up here, there's a forestry area and there's a lake at the top here. Then off to our right as we get up here as well, there's a big open kind of pasture area. Again, buy it, plough it all out. You can certainly add more fields onto this than what are actually on here. Um, where do I want to go? This way I think. Contracts are available. Oh, I forgot to show the biogas plant on the, uh, on the main map. The biogas plant is purchasable as you might expect. I think I might have gone the wrong way again. Yep, let's go across here. Uh, that will set you back 352,800, something like that, for the biogas plant. But I'll explain something else about that in a minute. Actually, when we get around to it, I'll explain. I'll say that, I'll probably forget. Now, there are a couple of cell points on this map. One is the construction site, which we will get to. And one it says buying sand. And I thought it was a buy point, but it's actually a sell point where they buy sand from you. I spent ages going around the map trying to find where do you get sand from? And in my head I was thinking, okay, it's obviously just going to be a PC. You know, we, we've got a remnant from the PC version. Uh, you can't actually do that. But here's the thing. If I go into this menu and we go across to, well, trailers will be the first obvious one. If we look at trailers, Look at the bottom, what it all takes. It shows the alfalfa, the clover, the dry alfalfa, dry clover. There's also a little pile on the end there. That's sand. If you're wondering where you get the sand from, up here, the north of the map, kind of out to the northeast, by the side of the lake, I think where they've been dredging the lake, they're pulling sand out. And the sand pile is here. So this sort of crane is... Know, showing you obviously what they're doing they're pulling the sand out this is where you get your sand from i'm going to show you a clip now that i took a little while ago So as you can see, one, this is where you get your sand from. You can't do it with a trailer. I did bring a trailer up and try and put the trailer in and just pick it up. You're going to need a bucket or something like that. I don't know if conveyor belts might work with it. But what worried me was I got down to the ground. I don't know if it's an infinite thing. I did speed up time through to the following day. And I did wonder whether it would kind of refill to simulate it being a constant excavation. 
So I don't know whether it's a finite supply of sand here or whether it's something you can just keep coming back and doing. But this is where you get your sand from. But you do need to own the land, as you saw from the clip, um, to be able to get your sand from. But this is where you get it from to be able to sell. Now, the thing about that is we're now up the top here. There's no direct route through from here. I suppose you could maybe make one, do some landscaping if you wanted to, um, to put a road in across. Because when we get round some, we've got some sell points. The construction site is there and the buying sand is there. Um, so if you don't do it there, you've got to come all the way around and all the way kind of back up to get to it. But I think that also adds to the map feeling very, very big. So what I'm going to do now is head back the way I just came. And I'll show you in a minute where I am. We'll look at some more of the landscape as we go. Okay, so where am I now? We'll check the map. I have come back from there, back down past the sheep farm. I've come across country a little bit. I'm now down between fields 10 and 11, because I want to show you some of the, again, just some of the terrain. I, I cut, there are going to be loads and loads of hidden gems on this map, things you're going to find. There's a few things I've come across already, which I'm not sure of the reason for them, and I've bought them thinking that maybe there's a trigger for something that hasn't popped up. But again, it, it, that's it's neither here nor there. But... We're going to head down towards the poultry farm and the sawmill. And it's, like I say, we're heading down into a kind of the swampy area. But it's the terrain, I, I just think, is fantastic. I'm really enjoying it for those kind of things. It gets a little bit bumpier and that's in different places. And we've got some muddy bits we'll get to in a little while as well. quality stuff if you ask me so from here i'm going to head into the poultry farm sell point there are no chickens here but there's a nice big flat area here if you bought it there's absolutely no reason at all why you couldn't actually then put chickens on it and have it as a poultry farm so we come down into here so you have got this grass area in front here I see no reason why you can't. Some barn and building space. And then we've got the cell point just there for the poultry farm. If we come at the bottom of here, we're going to head out towards the sawmill. Now, the sawmill only takes lumber because there is a wood chip cell point up in the northwest corner of the map. There's the train station. I think train station is cell point, but we'll get to that. Whoa, just clipped that curb. Okay, so be careful of the curbs. <laughs> they can really bite you. So from here, I'm going to go that way. So let's get to the curb again. We've had quite a lot over the last few months. Of, uh, we've had a lot of Polish maps. We've had all sorts of stuff coming out. This does have a completely different feel to it. I think with the terrain and the buildings and the way things are done, I just, I just, it just feels very different. And I think with the, the various different features on it, it just stands out to me, especially this week. Anyway, that's the lumber cell point. It's tucked between the two sets of logs here. So when you first came in, I first came in, I couldn't find it. I tried to open the doors on the building there. Couldn't find it. It's just tucked away there behind. So that's the sawmill for your lumber. And what we're going to do now is head out. And then we actually come to a main road in a minute. So we're off the tracks and the swamps and various different topographical, is that topographical features. Maybe. And onto the main road. You can only imagine, can't you, in some of these abandoned farms, what sort of barn finds you'll find. 
sort of vehicles and equipment might be left lying around by the government or previous farmers. So, another one of those farm areas that I looked at was 198 was this one. So, a farm area off to our left. Again, fairly flat, pretty good for placeables. If you wanted that to be your start farm. Just off to our left there. Now, what's also coming up our left, and this is bonkers, and I love it. It's another one of those features. If it wasn't here, you'd never know, but it is, and it's just wow. Um, that's the Rasvet sign. I think he's on the picture for the on the mod tap, isn't it? I'm trying to think now. Pretty sure it is. You come up into here again. Another one of these areas you can buy if you want to, but you don't have to. A bit run down and dilapidated. Now they claim. When I say they. They claim these buildings here are for grain. Hmm. Underground bunkers. Are we sure? And this is what it gets even better. Look. <laughs> hmm, a caged door. How many? And inside, turn the light on. Please work the light switch. Oh, oh. Turn out the trigger and come back at it. There you go, turn on light. I mean, yeah, sure. You can put potatoes and chicken meat wherever you want in here. Hmm, seems deeply suspicious to me. However, very cool. I mean, you've got the vents, of course, it's for grain and stuff like that. But what an amazing feature. I just haven't come across one like this before. You know? Partially submerged with all the different gateways to come in. And there's another one this side as well. Not for parking Cold War missile silos, uh, missile trucks or anything like that. No, that's not what it was designed for. Honest governor. So, from here. Probably that's where my mind went immediately. I was like, whoa, that's cool. Keeps them off satellite, doesn't it? Petrol station, off to the right. Fuel station, gas station. Uh, another farm area, off to our left. So many possibilities of things that you can do. Again, for multiplayer, fantastic. Various different locations for start farms. I like that. Uh, I mean, say that turning, sorry. Apologies. Right, we're going to head up the hill. And we'll go to the pig farm next. The road we're coming up to, if we go to our right, takes us back to where we started. Whoa. Where we started. A lot of people about. Did I miss the turning for the biogas plant? That would just be typical of me if I have. Uh, no. Further up, that's alright. So, into the pig farm. Now, Again, I'm not too sure. The um, trigger for your animals is here, for your pigs. This will hold 300. We have got the feed trough here and the water trough, I think, is the other end. Yeah, water trough is there, which would make that your point for your straw bedding. We've got a bit of barn space. We've got the silage pit here. Now, as far as the manure goes, there's a few of these dotted around the map in, in strange locations. I did try with the trailer to see if they were like buy points for manure. Um, they're not showing up as silos or anything for manure. And then we've got this conveyor belt here. Now, I don't know whether or not the manure will need to be collected, whether it will drop out here, or whether it will automatically just end up... Well, there'd have to be a pile, because that would have to grow. But anyway, again... I, just, I love the layout, I love the, the way it's been done. I just, you know... It's an absolute corker. Now I'm going to cut across the grass here, apologies. We're going to go to the dairy, 
Now the dairy only buys milk, there's nothing else it takes, it takes milk and that's it. Then we'll head up the western side of the map towards the northwest, which is where most of the cell points are, where the more kind of built up area is with the factories and uh, not tower blocks, but housing, housing blocks, habs. Now this does say as well, this is seasons ready. It doesn't say about precision farming though. But it does say it is seasons ready. Big old factory complex for the milk. I mean, realistically, this just has a milk trigger, um, but... And why not? Oh, that reminds me as well while I'm here. Because um, I think this comes under the periphery. So as we come past all the buildings, all the stuff here, the cell point is just there. That's the cell point for your milk. Um, yeah, I forgot to show the periphery on the map. And we'll talk about the biogas plant while we're here. Uh, if I click on this bit here, the periphery will cost you 7,159,128. However, it does get you all of these various different things. So if there's things you wanted to put down placeables potentially to add to your story or your narrative you know, I know story and narrative is the same thing you can buy the periphery so potentially before you start the map you could always put a load of stuff on um, government subsidy signs get enough money buy it you know pay off the the, the debt <laughs> or not the debt but the you know any loan payments and then you're ready to kind of start but the biogas plant was what I was going to say. The biogas plant, as I said, is 352,800. We are going to get to that in a moment. Sorry, since I was doing the periphery, I thought I'd do it now. The great thing about this is if you buy that, the prices are pretty good. 720 for silage rather than 360 is what we've been getting roughly. So 720. It also pays 720 for manure. And slurry, it pays 360, which is what you normally get for silage. So if you do get the biogas plant, it does pay out pretty well. Pretty cool. So, I'm trying to remember in my head where that came from. I'm sure there was an advert. There was a strange little creature. <laughs> I may have dreamt it. That also happens. Right, let's close that off. So I'm going to head back to the main road, then we'll head up, we'll have a quick look at the biogas plant. Because there's also another thing at the biogas plant that I, I've looked and I've tried with a couple of trailers and I, I couldn't get anything to work, but it, it could be a PC thing. You know, it, it, it wouldn't be unusual. On the road again. Off to our right. As we come up now, there's another little workshop trigger. Just a little shed by the side of the road with a toolbox and some gear, helping out passing travellers. So we're crossing over the river again, up into the more built-up area of the map. I'm going to close to overtake. Really nicely detailed. The terrain quality is brilliant. So, again, to our right. Now, that's the one I was talking about. It's another farm area, but has a more kind of factory feel to it. But you can buy that. And then we've got our biogas plant to the left. So, in my head, I'm already going through thinking about the mod hub and what kind of Russian-type, Eastern European mods and equipment and machinery we've got that would work on here really well. Two silage clamps off to our left, and our cell point, just here. A digestate tank is a little bit further over, that's just there. But this was the bit that kind of got me a little bit puzzled. It could be manure system related, it could be, I'm not too sure. But we've got this, which kind of looks like a cell point. But nothing came up, no triggers or anything like that. But what was weird was there's this as well. Now that just could be part of the map. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, I couldn't I couldn't get anything to work there at it, but 
who knows? You may know better than me. You may have tried and you may have got something to work. I, I couldn't, but... So, from the Biogas Club. We shall continue. Now, the other thing as well, for me, from a storytelling perspective, is the next bit. Now, we've always seen the sand, where we get the sand from. This is the construction site. All fenced off. But what is brilliant about this, it's nice and flat, grass areas, you can buy these up, these plots. And I was just thinking in my head, using the landscaping tool, bringing sand here to deliver it, and gradually over a, a story, over a let's play, buildings being built and appearing and having a kind of an estate or a factory or something put on it, you know? So this is one of the sell points for sand. I just think it, it, the scope for what you could do. Nice. From here, we're going to head round to the main shop, machinery store. The machinery store shop is the reset point. So if you do get bogged down, you do have a problem that is where your machinery will come back to. There's a whole centre of the map. When I said about the reservoir area, we're not going to get to. We, we just won't have the time. Well, I mean, you know, I could drag it on a bit long and say drag it on. No, that sounded awful. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to drag it on too long, is what I was going to try and say poorly. But it's worth having a look because, we, again, there's loads more of that kind of boggy ground. So this is the main store. We're always in. Around the front is your trigger for your... Um, for your store menu, like so. Around the sides here, we've got these garage doors. Does that one not open? No, oh, maybe not. For your workshop trigger, I think it extends a little bit further out. Then around the back, we've got a lime by point. These buildings, there's a few of these dotted around the map. map. They do open, so for storage of vehicles or whatever you want to put in them, pallets and things like that, you can. Lime by point is around the back here. We've also got a kind of rear gate that comes out the back of here. Which leads down on the map across this swampy land here and brings you kind of right across the middle of the map. So if you want to cut across the middle, you absolutely can. There's all these tracks and lanes and fords and bridges and things that can bring you right the way across and, and in the back there. But that's got one of those muddy areas where the sort of the wheels disappear into the mud. I know it's it's only a kind of it's not actual mud, but it just adds to the immersiveness of the, the, the map and the playability, I think, personally. So what we're gonna do now is head out. I say head out, it's not that far, but we've got the grain I say grain silo, mine's gone blank. Let's open that up. Grain elevator. What's amazing to me when I had a quick look around this map earlier is the grain elevator. It's like a prison. It's like a watchtower at the main gate. But I suppose if you think back, you know, Russia's been through so many different changes in its history and periods where food and grain and stuff was scarce. And I suppose it was to stop people stealing it, whether people they were worried about revolts and things like that but yeah we've got, we got a watchtower here at the grain elevator the cell point is just here you can drive up and round and there's a the, the train doesn't run but we've got a simulated train track that runs from here and out the other end and from the other corner right up in the northwest we've got the other part of it uh runs from here another big old complex now i've seen a lot of these around i'm assuming these at night come on because there's not a switch for them um so i would imagine the cell points at night light up otherwise it'd be i suppose pretty pointless having those big old floodlights if i didn't it seems so bizarre coming around this on in a john deere I just, <laughs> it's weird isn't it It is funny, like I was saying about Vladivostok, how machinery and equipment and cars and 
things you would never expect to find in far-flung places turn up and you wonder how did they ever get there i know companies do you know send things out but you do get these weird things happen don't you and strange vehicles turn up in the weirdest of places so up this road here we're now coming to the last the last of we've got quite a few sell points coming up now so this is the bakery and this is one that's got a, a weird bit i'm not quite sure here is the sell point at the bakery i was expecting one of those big bread baking wheat murals on the wall this is the bakery sell point but we've got this on the floor over here and i can't i couldn't work out what that was for i bought a trailer over i clicked on it i tried nothing comes up in the menu as being a sell point and if i click on the uh, menu here and go to bakery tag place that's the sell point for the bakery that doesn't come up with anything so again could be a leave over from the pc version i don't know i know i keep saying i don't know i apologize it's you know as i'm going around and find all of these things and i have spent a little bit of time on here trying to work out well i'm not just whizzing around going oh i haven't got a clue, I haven't got a clue. i have tried to, to work out what machinery and equipment works on them but i can't unfortunately next up we have got Oh, I didn't, I just only thought, I didn't show you when we were all over here, I did the water tower and the cows, I didn't show the barn, there's a barn sell point just up there, there's a big haystack, and then to the side of it, some smaller bales, the sell point is right between the two, sorry, I just only thought we'd come up on the barn, but we're not with the bales one now, aren't we? So animal dealer and bale sale we're at now. So the livestock trigger is here. As you can see, we've got the enclosures there. A couple of animals there. and got the livestock train waiting too. And then this one here is your bale trigger for your bales sale. I feel like the janitor, the map janitor. I'm going around in the morning and opening all the gates up ready for the day's trading although it's near 10 o'clock now so running a bit late from here we're going to cut through the housing all those curbs So this is the buying sand, so this is the second place you can sell your sand, which I assume will then get loaded onto these train cars and sent off. So that's the second sell point for sand, just here. Prices were sitting at about 600 when I checked them before. Let's go across one and go right to the very end. Yeah, buying sand. Construction site 703 and 588. Worth doing a bit of sand, filling up a trailer load. And and off you go. Then we come from there to the last two cell points. I think it's the last, no, last three cell points. Right up in the northwest corner of the map. Hang on, I've missed one. I have. Let me open that gate. It was across from the buying sand. Uh, can I cut across there? From the buying sand point, which is behind me, we've got this cell point here. This is the vegetable cell point, which is just here. Now, I also bought a trailer up here with some potatoes in because I did wonder whether or not there was an animation for potatoes and sugar beet and stuff going into the train. There isn't, unfortunately. Um, we are at the vegetable buzzer. And this one, if we go down to it, we'll do sugarcane, sugar beet, and potatoes. Now we really are going to go to the last three sale points. So, through the gateway, on our right, we've got the wool sell point, which is just there check on the map wool and cotton 
is that one there. The wood chip one's going to be around the corner, and then the train station, which is another one of the main cell points, is just up there. So round behind this building, we've got the wood chip cell point. Right in the opposite corner of the map to the sawmill. But that little trough, I suppose it's, that's for your wood chips. Just there. And then, which I'm not sure if these open or not, I didn't check them. Well, they don't. Always worth a check, you never know. We've got our train station cell point just tucked in here. Now you can either do it as a pull in, pull out one, or you can have do it as a drive through, that's the cell point. The turning circle at the end isn't huge. You can swing around over the tracks and head back out from there. That is Rasvet by Den Ben. Can you tell I like it? <laughs> it's a very, very, very nice map. Very well made. Loads of great detail, loads of great features. Brilliant. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as always thanks for watching